Alrighty, just a quick little walkthrough of that location testing we did the other day in the studio, <clears throat> just so you can follow along at home. Uh, here we have, uh, as I said, first thing I like to do generally when I get to a location is just put my camera up on a tripod <clears throat> and um, and then just do a basic exposure to see what we're dealing with. So, uh, nastiness that is those overhead lights in there, they're kind of that fluorescent, horrible fluorescent lights. Uh, they're not very flattering, they're, the direction isn't very good. The color balance isn't very good, so our, this was our first shot, our second shot. If we take our uh, second shot and we rebalance it, I, I, I don't have the, uh, I can't recall exactly, but I think this is on the tungsten balance. Uh, so the actual background matches. Why does it match? Because it's perfectly gray, perfectly white, perfectly black, so it's very, very neutral. Um, but <clears throat> the key being when we bring in our secondary light, um, those light, those light, those color temperatures need to match. And we can see here when I stand in and I take a photograph of just the available light, I'm obviously in silhouette. We don't want that. We want to have a little bit of light on the person. So I bring in my light <clears throat> on a stand and I'm shooting this with, um, I'm going to say this is probably, I'm guessing this is probably on a tungsten setting, so my flash is a bit cool. You can sort of see the highlights up on this white beam here that are illuminated, the highlights in the ceiling. Um, they look a little bit kind of bluish magenta. <clears throat> so you can tell that my light uh, that I've brought in, the stationary fill flash that I've brought in, is not the same color temperature as the lights in the background. Um, and the easiest way to tell that, if I go back from one shot to the next, it's the shadows that sort of give you the best indication. So the shadows here are neutral in color. Then when the shadows are filled in with my secondary light, they take on the color temperature of the light, which is that sort of bluish daylight, 5,500 degrees Kelvin, uh, that the flashes are balanced for. Now, if I wanted to make any kind of adjustments to have the foreground brighter or darker, um, I got a few options. If I close my shutter speed down, it's going to make the background a little bit darker. Or if I turn my flash down, it's going to make it a little bit darker. And this is sort of a, you know, a, a cook to taste kind of a thing. Um, this is probably maybe a little bit too dramatic, but depending upon what you're looking for, this, this might be more appropriate. You can see the shadows on the ceiling here, meaning that my flash is a bit too strong. <clears throat> I think, anyways, for the, the background that we've got going on here. So I probably want something a little bit more in the middle. Um, something like this. So you can see here the stand is actually in the shot now. So I've made the light brighter just by pushing it forward. So I'm bringing the light forward. I don't think I changed the, the dial on it to make the output stronger. Um, I think I just moved it forward. And again, I'm not using TTL or any of the automated fl functions on the flash. I'm just putting it on manual. Um, ideally, you can take a meter reading with a, a flash meter, but you could just sort of move it, move it forward and back and then check uh, with your tether to see if it's, if it's what you like. So I'm going to say that this probably isn't too bad. Um, again, as I said in class, I, I'm kind of a bit of a pasty guy. I, I, my skin color is horrible to begin with, but um, I look a little bit too magenta there even though I think that those color balances are okay. Um, the other things that I like to see, uh, the shadows are getting a little bit softer up here. I mean, I could move the light around a little bit more if I wanted to get rid of that. But I like the fact that I don't look cut out. There's a bit of shape to the body. There's a bit of shape to the face. Um, <laughs> there's lots of shape to my body, I guess. Um, but there's a little bit of contour to it. So the, the key being, don't put the flash right on the camera. Take it off the camera on a stand and then you can move it around to sort of get a little bit more depth in the photo. So I'm going to say that this is probably to my liking. Um, and I could do this right from Capture One. Um, I don't. I tend to work from, uh, from Photoshop. Um, <clears throat> not that there's anything wrong with the Capture One processor by any means. It's just that I, I think that um, of what am I going to do in terms of layering and um, uh, retouching, etc. So... In the background here, you can see my computer is struggling a little bit to keep up, but um, I'm going to just open this up. Now, what frame was I on there? Uh, 22389. Oh, I'm on the wrong one here. Uh, test number two. So I'm just going to... Uh, sorry, I've done, this, I've done this test with each class, so my, my files aren't, uh, aren't necessarily as organized as I would like them to be. So let's going to say that I'm going to do uh, this image here. I think this was the one I demoed with my with the first class. So I'm going to take the image, or sorry, take the, the file. I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. And by dragging that over to Photoshop, it's a .cr2 file, which means it's a camera raw file from a Canon camera. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up in uh, in Camera Raw. You can see the difference in the in the exposures too from uh, from what we were getting in Capture One to what I'm getting in Photoshop. Now I, I'm going to guess that the skin color probably looks good better in this version only because um, it's not color corrected to the background, and that means that my skin color is probably going to be a little bit warmer. Um, than it was in the uh, in the original capture that we showed uh, back here in Capture One. See, that's a lot bluer than that. Um, again, this is probably more native to the camera, which is probably a little bit more uh, uh, more realistic. Photoshop still trying to open here; it's struggling. Okay, so um, this is often what I will do. Is see here? I don't think that's a bad. I, I'm going for pleasing skin color. Not necessarily accurate, and I think that this is pleasing. Notice also too how neutral the wall is in this shot. So I'm color balanced more or less to the strobe here, and the background is looking a little yellow. So I'm going to say that this is okay, and you can tweak the temperature to your liking, but I'm going to say that's okay, and I'm going to open this. <clears throat> so click on open in uh, in my capture what or sorry in my camera raw file here, and it's just going to open up the image. Command H to hide that annoying grid. And then I'm going to leave that open and I'm going to go back to the same file. You can notice that it, I've, I've made a change to it because it's got in camera raw. I can see the sliders have been adjusted. So I'm going to go back to, um, to Photoshop. I'm going to open up the same file. And what it's going to do this time is it just opens up the same file and it's just going to call it dash two or something like that. So what I'm going to do here. Uh, just for sake of ease for this demo, I'm going to take my color picker and I'm just going to click on, take my color picker. Why is that not working? Come on. This is like a real sluggish old computer here and I got things running in the background. Come on. There we go. And I'm just going to select this wall in the background. And I'm going to say that's the exposure I want for the background. So these flats and the cove and the floor, et cetera, behind me are, are, are balanced now to, um, <clears throat> to the color picker. And you can see that brought down to 3,800. I was guessing it was probably more like 32, but that's okay. Um, and now I've got a background and a foreground. So what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to take this layer click on it, drag it over to my destination layer, hold down the shift key, it'll just automatically center it. And if I let go, it drops that layer on top. So you can now see I got two layers in my dialog box here. I've got the cool one where my skin color is too magenta or too blue. And I've got the warm one where my skin color looks good, but the background looks too blue. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna mask it out. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm just gonna mask it out. So I'm gonna go to select, uh, subject, no, select subject works pretty good. Um, I find that sometimes it struggles a little bit with the hairlines and stuff, especially when they're receding like mine are. Um, but this, just for the sake of this demonstration, I, I'll, I'll use this. So yeah, you can see it did actually a little crappie poo on the top. Um, but we'll use this for our demo. So you could refine mask, but I'll leave that to the Photoshop class. Um, I'm going to select, make a mask. And what has it done? Well, <coughs> it's now done the exact opposite of what we wanted to do. Here, I've masked myself from the background and added it to the foreground. Easiest way to get around that is click on this. Uh, my background, when it opens, is locked. So if I just click on the lock, it takes it off. And I'm going to drag that to the top. And I'm going to just move my layer mask up. Now, the alignment on the mask should be perfect because they're the exact same frame. So the pixels are lined up. And there we have it. So you might look at this and go, hey, Dave, that's way too blue in the background and it's way too um, warm in the foreground. And yeah, you can sort of tweak this a little bit more to taste. Personally, I think that actually looks okay because I tend to think that, you know, pasty old white guys like me, we look better with a little bit of color in our skin. Uh, it just looks a little healthier, especially when you're shooting people, you know, in Toronto in February. Anyways, this is sort of the step through that I use. Oops, I don't need a crop preview. Escape. Um, but I mean, this is the step through that I use for um, for balancing stuff quickly. When would I use this? When you're on location and you don't know what the lights in the background are, and you're maybe perhaps on a limited 
bit of a time or even a limited bit of a budget and you, and you don't want to balance the flash with gels etc etc so it's just a quick way of doing it if you had to do a whole slew of people like you were doing portraits and you had to do 20 or 30 of them like this you might want to refine the lights a little bit more and cut down on the photoshop time but i, I think given a one-off scenario like we were demonstrating in class here this is a, a pretty good method for it anyways so that's it that's the walkthrough on uh using a supplemental light in a mixed light situation and how to balance them both uh, using Photoshop and an external flash. Alrighty, thanks.